Hi there, I'm Jim Henson, and welcome to the world of puppetry. This evening we're in France to enjoy a performance by Philippe Gentil. The show is very French, witty, and whimsical. But what I find particularly exciting is Philippe's work with abstract shapes. The results are very pure, very poetic, because here more than ever the puppets are symbols on which the audience can place their own interpretations. Ladies and gentlemen, the puppet artistry of Philippe Gentil. What is fascinating in uh, puppetry or in, in, in the object, animation of the object, is the fact that it appeals very much to this, all this imaginary world and to, to a certain animism. Uh, I think mm -hmm. puppetry works on two levels. There is one level which is what we call an intellectual level. Uh, we know if we, I don't know if we animate this glass, uh, well, uh, and you don't see on a table the glass is moving, you don't see, the, you see that it is animated by itself. You know that obviously there is someone who is, who is manipulating the, the glass behind, behind it. But the glass will symbolize something. Uh, so the, the, the approach to that to, from the audience will be, the audience will take it as a symbol. This is the intellectual approach. Hmm? Mm -hmm. We know that it, it won't be any more a glass, it will, it will uh, symbolize something else. Mm -hmm. Now the second approach is, and this is the irrational part, uh, which is very important, which sometimes poverty forget about it. It is the fact that this glass also somewhere behind in, uh, in our irrational part, uh, we keep uh, an archaic memory, I would say, uh, where we, we have all this, mem with this animism mm -hmm. in uh, old time where we would believe that there is a soul in a tree or a soul in a stone. Or, and this is still there. And we, we like to believe that somewhere, maybe after all, this glass is really uh, moved by itself. It's alive. Yes, it's alive, yes. And I think this is what fascinates, what is fascinating in, in this world of puppetry. It is that we appeal to both sides of the psyche. Mm -hmm. Here is this character coming out, bursting out, that's which that's is... That's, he's being born then. Yes, yes, he's being okay. born. He's like yeah. a fetus, yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. And he is just, there is a sort of explosion and there is a hope, you know, this hope of coming out in the freedom. But suddenly there is the emptiness. So it is a contradiction between this 
raising and, and, and suddenly feeling free and suddenly <laughs> realizing that everything is empty and, and then being scared and, and going down and, and being sucked down and then trying to, to, to raise again. Character, the puppeteers are pulling the, the character apart. Mm -hmm. It's also one of the uh, uh, one of the part of the early life where the, the, ch the child can't actually realize the unity of his body, and we call it corps uh, morcelé, uh, uh, the dismantled body in, in uh, psychoanalysis. In, uh, pro in this process, is before the mirror.
it was very powerful. I mean, that's a, that's a very strong piece of theater, and I think it's, it's maybe the strongest thing in the show there. But when you're doing it, how, how are you feeling yourself? Or what is your attitude towards him? Uh, it's, uh, it, I, I think it is, it is always this idea to be inside the, the, the character, to be inside and also to be outside. So uh, uh, there are three points, three energy points. It is uh, trying to, to control uh, uh, the character and sometimes trying to feel like he feels. Uh, and also to feel the feeling from the audience, which comes, and it's a sort of circle between the, these three uh, points, uh, uh, continuously. It's very fragile, because sometimes a noise can just break everything and, and, and uh, collapse everything. And, uh, it's it's a very fragile, uh, especially for the Piero, where everything is is so uh, at the limit.
This is, is one of my very favorite puppet pieces of all time. Uh, how did you happen to come about doing it? What, what interested me in metamorphosis, it is the idea of a, sh a shape or an object has uh, its birth, its growth, but also um, its top possibilities. Mm -hmm. right. uh, it's, it's like a human being. Uh, it, 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 it goes up and then at a certain point it declines mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it gives shapes to uh, another, uh, give birth to another shape. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it's very close to life. The best illustration of uh, what I was saying about the shape uh, getting to its splendor, you know, for, and then declining, I think it can be resumed in, in the balloon, which, which inflates and, 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 uh, and comes into the sphere, which is supposed the, the most perfect shape in, 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 in our world, anyway. And, and the sphere goes up, and then suddenly you realize how pretentious it is and start to laugh to its own uh, pretension and then deflate by laughing and then uh, uh, goes down and, and, and die. Yeah. This very, very ugly shape, you know, comes uh, with a sort of bubble thing and coming. And, and this shape comes nearby the balloon which has deflated. And uh, um, look at it and uh, think, think the other shape is ugly, not, not having a look <laughs> on itself. start to build the shape and as we are building them they very often don't want to say what we want them to say and they are they are starting to escape and and to to go their own way and this is a, in one way very frustrating because it does not we, we are not controlling it we, we we want them to do something and they they, they are pulling us somewhere so it's frustrating, and in another way, it starts also to be very rich if you are patient enough to listen to them and to follow the way they, they, they want to lead you. And it's a very fascinating, uh, it's, it's getting more rich sometimes than the, the original script.
Does it take a lot of rehearsal on each of these pieces? Uh, the yeah. ostrich ballet? Mm. That takes That's right. Hours. You have the idea of black theater, which, which is a, a narrow curtain of light. <laughs> the fact that they are, we are in black hood and, and black uh, uh, velvet uh, costume. And the limit is very narrow uh, between the, the light and uh, the shadow. And the fact also that we are working visually and that to compete with the world, we have to be as fast to be able to change the image as we could change uh, them by words, you know. So it has to, the tempo has to be pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Your present group of, of, of people who are taking uh, your show out, uh, how did you come upon them and, and how long have they been with you? It's always very important to have a sort of nice, uh, tight, uh, nice collaboration. And most of them, they, are, they, they were not. They were never puppeteer. Uh, Alain, for instance, was a teacher. He, he started to do a little theater, and then he was clown in, a, in one of the groups. And uh, uh, it's nice to start from zero. It's also sometimes good to, to have fresh people, which all discover uh, this world. Catherine, for instance, well, she did theater before. Agnès also did uh, some theater work. And Emmanuel was engineer. He's an engineer. <laughs> yes, he's an engineer. We, have an, we had an architect also in the group. Uh, most of them ha had done some uh, body work before. This is important, yes. They all have a bit of their specialty in the group. Uh, Alain is taking care of the sound and the music. Catherine uh, make the, some of the puppets, uh, sculpture. Uh, Agnes is uh, more specialized in the sewing. Do very many of your concepts come from uh, analysis, uh, psychiatry? Uh, uh, what is fascinating, it is uh, all this world, this subconscious world, which uh, uh, this, it is really a reserve, a sort of uh, uh, field where, you, where we, we are uh, holding all the fears. Dreaming is supposed to be the expression of the subconscious. The actor, which is sleeping, just is think under the, 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 the big drape, uh, black drape, which, which is an image of the sea. When he goes under the, the big black drape, then he goes in his subconscious. tied up with his subconscious as he is tied up with the, the, the big black drape. Going in, into this subconscious, he creates a second part of himself, which is the marine.
And there is a sort of power relation where he is trying to control one, and slowly the other is taking uh, uh, more importance and more. And this importance is uh, symbolized by, by the fact that the, the puppet is growing and, and become uh, much more powerful and finally overtaking. People always ask me how I got started as a puppeteer, so I, I, I now get to ask you. <laughs> how did you get started as a puppeteer? When I was a child, uh, I, I, I started to make puppets. I was 12 years old, and uh, uh, I was quite a terror in, in the... Uh, I did 18 boarding school in 10 years. Really? Yes. <laughs> and one of my first success in, uh, in, uh, in puppetry uh, was a puppet I did, uh, a flat puppet I uh, built behind the blackboard um, in the classroom. I put the puppet behind the blackboard so you could not see it actually. There was a string which was coming down the blackboard under the platform of the teacher to my desk. And whenever I would pull this string, the puppet would come out behind the blackboard and make <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, when the teacher would turn, because big laugh would come into the classroom to look at the black ball, the puppet would disappear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was even invited in another classroom to perform. 
until one day um, the string got caught and the puppet stayed, remained up there and the, the teacher followed the string and, <laughs> and I was expelled from another school. That was one more school. <laughs> <laughs> Follies. This is uh, Sigmund Freud, I assume? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It comes from Siegfried Follies and from oh. Sigmund Freud. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The combination, yes. This is your newest show, is it? That's right, yes. Yeah. And yeah. You, you had wanted to do a smaller, more of a one man show? Yes, it was interesting because for the first time I worked with a dialogue and so I went right into it. <laughs> it's just, it just the extreme. Uh, uh, I talked a lot in this. Huh? Fr from where are you coming? From the interior. And who are you? I am the minister. Uh, from what? From the interior. And you... Sh I think I am hearing... Quite please. I think I am hearing uh, the footstep of a car. Uh, uh, mon commandement, uh, série phalange. <laughs> Index présent, majeur présent, annulaire présent, auriculaire, auriculaire, répondez quand on vous appelle. And you did a lot of the characters, they're all parts of your hand, you and Mary. Right? Yes, right. yes, that's why also uh, uh, they are made of fingers, so that they, uh, we, we cast our own fingers and we just put them together, so that the, the whole concept was really uh, uh, trying to, to illustrate the idea that it was from ourselves. <laughs> yes, Mr. the Minister. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> All right, uh, could you open this door? <laughs> yes, Mr. the Minister. <laughs> it is locked, uh, Mr. the Minister, from the exterior. <laughs> no, from uh, Mr. the Minister, from the interior. <laughs> Storyteller, you are going to be pursued in a depress column. <laughs> all right, you are free to 
run away now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brinister. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Felix Nial, you have five minutes to get this storyteller. Yes, Mr. Brinister. <laughs> The concept is a storyteller is plunging into himself and is uh, confronting himself with the different character he has, personality he has in himself. And he's trying to find the exit, continuously to find this exit. Uh, I think he's trying also to find a, a kind of harmony. <coughs> Why did you choose puppetry? You know, why do you work as a puppeteer? Why is this a good expression? <laughs> I think, I think it is. Uh, at the beginning, I had, uh, I had difficulty of communication. Uh, I was a very difficult uh, child, you know, and uh, uh, it was a way of communicating, uh, not directly to the people, but through objects. Uh, it was a way of communication, I think. I would not, I would have difficulty to talk, and I would have difficulty, and I think it, it was a, a way to talk through something. So that's why at the beginning, the, uh, and maybe still now, uh, Zygmunt Forizny, I think, is the, is the first time I'm really talking. Before I was not talking at all, it was all visual.
No, you make me want to shout. Look, my hands jumping. Look, my heart bumping. So mad that I come on now. Don't forget to say you will. Yeah, don't forget to shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say you will. Throw your head back, baby. Say you will. Come on, come on. Say you will. Throw your head back. Come on now. My long-awaited plan. And what is this plan of yours, Your Honor? I will tell you, and you alone, my secret plan, Wang Jun. Draw closer. No one but you must hear. <laughs> <laughs> 